I want to continue my discussion of covariance and correlation. And in the previous video, I drew a couple of graphs and I showed you perfect positive correlation and perfect negative correlation. And in these two graphs, I've actually drawn this correctly. Before I drew just sort of the positive quadrant, but you can have negative values. You can have B in the negative range, which would be down here or here, A in the negative range, which would be here or here. So you can have both positive, B positive, A negative. Um, sounds like a, a blood type there, actually. Um, you can have them both being negative, or you can have B being negative and A being positive. Now, when we had perfect positive correlation, everything fit on one straight line. That is, if you had the return for A in the first month and then the return for B, you got a point, and then you had the return for A and the return for B in the second month, you got another point. And if you ha had all those points and you could draw a straight line connecting all of those, and it was upward sloping, that's perfect positive correlation. Okay. Likewise, if you had these points and they sloped downward and they all were lying on the line, that would be perfect negative correlation. Okay. Less than perfect positive correlation looks like this. Okay. Suppose the return for A in the first month is this amount, the return for B is this amount, so we get a point. Oops, sorry. Uh, let me do that again. Okay, there we go. We get a point. And then in the next month, A is up a little bit, but B is actually down a bit. Okay, and then in another month, they're both down. Then you have a month where A is down, so it's in this quadrant, but B is up a little bit. And you plot, you get all these points. So something like this. So we're, we're getting a, a lot of data. And you try and fit a line through those points. Let me make it a different color line. What would you do? Well, you try and fit a line kind of as best you could through these points. Okay. That would be the case where we have um, correlation that's positive, but not perfect positive. So in this case, your correlation is between is greater than zero but it's less than plus one, okay? So when A goes up, B probably goes up, but you don't know how much, okay? In this case, right here, A went up, but B actually went down. So it's not a perfect relationship, but it's, it's pretty good. And the closer you are to this line, the closer the points are to the line, the more, the closer it is to plus one, okay? For negative correlation, it looks like this. Okay, the same thing, uh, put some points in, so A went down, and B went up, and then um, A went up, and B actually went down, and we got a bunch of points here, all, again, all over the place. One there, and one here, and if we were to fit a line, our line would look something like like this. And this again is the case where we have uh, correlation that is less than zero, but also less than or greater than minus one. So it's, it's negative correlation. That is when A goes up, B usually goes down. When B goes up, A usually goes down. But not exactly one for one. Okay? When one changes, you're not sure exactly how much the other one changes. All right, down here I have, I have an example. And so let's work through a covariance and a correlation here. And I, I already put it down to, to make it a little bit easier. It's actually kind of hard to write with this little pen and tablet. And I made up the numbers so they're fairly easy to compute. So the first thing we need is we need to calculate the mean. All right, and we could do that by, in fact, I'll do the, uh, I'll write it out for you. The average value or the expected value for A, okay, I'm going to use R bar A rather than E of R A, it's a little bit easier to write, would be 
20% times the first period's return, okay, or uh, the recession's return of the first day of the world, 2% plus 0.3 times 8%, okay, because 8% is the return we get in the normal growth period, plus 0 0.20 times 14 percent. And if you work that out, it should be 8 percent. I tried to make it sort of easy to do. You can see that it's symmetric. This is symmetric, so this one, the recession is weighted exactly the same as the boom period, and the recession is 6 percent below the re, um, normal growth, and the boom period is 6 percent above um, the normal growth. So it should be 8 percent. Okay. And that should be the case for both of them, right? Because you can see that this has the same numbers, 14, 8, and 2. So the expected return for both of these is 8%. I'm trying to make it a little bit easier for myself to do the, the computations. All right. So now that we have those, we want to calculate the covariance. The covariance is going to look like this. The covariance between A and B is going to be equal to the probability that we're in the first state of the world, which is a recession, times the return that A gets in the first state of the world, minus its average value of 8, times the return that B gets in that state of the world, minus its average value, okay, plus 0.3, and that's going to be, what, 8 minus 8 times 8 minus 8. All right, and I've run out of space there, so I'm going to go down to this line. And then 0 0.20, 14 minus 8, and then uh, 2 minus 8. Did I do that correctly? Yes. Okay, so if we work this out, let's see what we have here. We're going to have 0.2 times minus 6. Okay, well, this is, this is minus 6. This is minus 6. Uh, this is plus 6, right? So minus 6 times positive 6 is, what, 36? So we're going to have 0.2 times negative 36 plus this is 0 and this is 0, so this, the second term is going to be 0, and then 0 0.20 times, what, minus, uh, positive 6 times minus 6, which again is minus 36. So what do we have? We have, we can add those together, so we have 2 times 0 0.20 times minus 36, or we can just do it this way, 0.2 times 36 negative equals, okay, times 2, because there are two of those, so we get minus 14.4. So you can see that that we have a negative covariance, and if you look, that, that that's no surprise, right? They're moving in opposite directions. When this is doing worse than average, this is doing better than average. In this case, they're both doing average. When A is doing better than average, B is doing worse than average. But the minus 14.4 doesn't tell us how strong that degree of negative uh, relationship is. So we need to figure out the correlation. And in order to do the correlation, we have to figure out the standard deviation of both A and B, but it's going to be the same. I made up this example so you know the computations would be a little bit easier. So let's just work out one of those. Remember that the variance is going to be equal to the probability you're in the first state of the world, so we'll just do A, okay? The return of A minus its average value squared plus the probability we're in the second state of the world times the return we get um, in that state of the world minus the average value squared plus the probability we're in the third state of the world times the return we get in that state 14 minus the average value 
and we square that. Okay, so what do we have here? We have, in this case, this is minus 6 squared, that's 36, so we have 0 0.20 times 36 plus 0 0.30 times 0, so that's 0, and then this is going to be the same thing, this is going to be 6 squared, which is 36, so 0 0.20 times 36 okay looks just like this except these are positive numbers so we should get positive 14.4 okay if we want the standard deviation of this we take the square root of the variance we use the row row a I'm sorry not row Sigma a which is standard deviation will be the square root of the variance Okay, variance is denoted by sigma squared, so we're going to have the square root of 14.4. Alright, so let's just change the sign of this and take the square root of it, and we get 3.7947, okay, etc., etc. 3.7947. Etc. In fact, I'll just store that because we're going to need that. That's the same standard deviation for B as well. So now what's the, what's the correlation going to be? The correlation is going to be the covariance of, between A and B divided by the standard deviation of A times the standard deviation of B. So what do we get? We get we get minus 14.4. In fact, probably a better way to do this is just to write this as the square root of the variance. 14.4 times the square root of 14.4, right? Each one of these had a variance of 14.4. Taking the square root gives us the standard deviation. We didn't actually have to do this part. And this will actually make it work better. So this is going to be minus 14.4, and the square root of 14.4 times the square root of 14.4 is just 14.4, right? So these things will cancel, and we're going to get negative 1. So this is perfect negative correlation. And again, if you could go back and look at the numbers, you know, you tell me that A went up by 6%, I'll tell you that B went down by 6%, okay? And it happens in you know, in every case, state of the world. You tell me that B went up by 8%, I'll tell you that A went down by 8%, I'm sorry, not 8%, went up by 6%, I'll tell you that A went down by 6%. So this is perfect negative uh, correlation. Okay, they're moving exactly in opposite directions. And when we talk about portfolio variance, you'll find that when we combine two assets with perfect negative correlation, we can actually create a riskless portfolio because if we combine them in the right proportions, when one loses money, the other will exactly offset that loss by gaining the same amount of money.